I am not an unboxing channel. I'm not a product review channel. I make costumes and props. I try to do everything I can um, with what I have. It's... Up until very recently, I haven't had the resources to um, invest in good equipment. Well, we finally had a project. This jacket, the, the Dante jacket from DMC, that my sewing machine can't handle. It's just a little too much for it. Um, couch leather, yeah, it'll go through lead, whatever. But that's actual jacket leather, and it's just a little too much. So I had to spend a lot of money. It's not like a lot, a lot, but for a sewing machine at my income level, it's, it's, it's a decent amount. It's about two grand of my own money. I bought it from Tandy. Um, a, no discounts, no deals, no anything. That's, that's not how that went. Um, Tandy doesn't know who I am. They're, I'm not sponsored, affiliated. It's my local leather shop. I like the people who work there, but it's not, um, yeah, they, they don't know who I, corporate Tandy has no idea who I am, which is fine. That's, that's kind of the way I like it. So all of this is my own money, my own opinions. So I guess we're going to do an unboxing. Never done one. This should be interesting. The only reason I'm doing this in the first place is, like I said, I spent a lot of money on this. Um, and if it's worth it, I want people to know whether it's worth it or not. So hence this video. Um, plus down the road, I want to remember how I felt right now. So what I got, there, there. <coughs> is a Cowboy 797 leather sewing machine. <coughs> Saw a demo of it, uh, the, the guy down there, great guy, ran through a bunch of stuff. He had three things of a, uh, he said half inch worth of leather didn't even bat an eye. So step one, I guess, is to open everything up and see what we got. I'm going to start with these long, tall boxes. I believe that's the substructure. <coughs> so I just swept so there's dust in the air. And uh, having somewhere to put everything seems like a good idea. If you don't have a knife, these um, uh, plastic ties, you can usually just, if you find where they overlap, you can just pull. More times than not, they'll come right undone. One side usually has a little tail. Just pull on that, it pops right up. Alright. So, why don't you join me on the floor and we'll open this box. What do we got? It's a box. Oh my goodness. So part of this box is pretty well damaged, which is why they have a box inside of the box. These are industrial machines. All right. Looks like the table legs and the foot pedal. Neat. The table legs are adjustable, so that's convenient. It has casters, it rolls around. Um, so once it's got casters on it, it's not gonna it. What are we? Sounds like a drawer full of parts. Most sewing machines come with some kind of a, a drawer with just accessories. Figure out what that is and where those go later. Foot pedal. Casters. And then the rest of the way. I don't do unboxing videos. I'm going to assume I'm supposed to edit all the noise out because there's a lot of it with tape. Alright, is that it? No. This feels like a crossbeam.
all the nuts and bolts. All right, and that's it for this box. I'm going to assume the instructions are in this one or in the servo motor. So let's fake it until then. Locking casters. And I have four very large bolts. Nuts. Hmm. These almost feel threaded. Maybe they are. I only buy kits now, by the way. Just because, you know, it's way easier to grab a kit and have everything I may need. Except for there's one that's missing. There's probably a super easy way of doing this. Why would you do it that way? It's the stupid and hard way. Should be the name of my channel. Doing things the stupid and hard way. They just put a like a Allen at the end instead of this weird whatever. This would have been super simple. No, as usual, somebody was being clever. The other problem is it's just far enough that my wrench won't fit in, so I have to pull it out and do it this way for the last few. So I'm sure. There's a super easy way of doing this, and I'm not doing it. So if you look, it's got this weird hex thing and these spikies, and I'm sure that's how we're supposed to tighten it, but it doesn't make any sense to me. So let's keep doing it this way. At least it's coarse thread, not machine thread. Oh my goodness. I went to Tandy to uh, see my options. And the guy there, the manager, great guy, convinced me to uh, spend way more than I wanted. But this is a sewing machine I'll probably never have to replace, or at least not for a real long time. And I've burned through seven sewing machines in the last four years. Maybe getting one that actually does the thing that I keep trying to make the other ones do will stop, you know, burning through sewing machines. I buy the same sewing machine. It's a brother. I love that sewing machine. It functions and works amazing until the moment it doesn't. And then I go replace it with the same sewing machine. Because I like the experience it provides. All right. Now this is the top. It's about the, the um, usable footage I'm gonna have. I'm also gonna have to figure out where I'm supposed to put this thing because, like I said, I don't have the largest shop in the world. We'll do what I can. All right, let's assume they're the same. I'll put this one upside down because last time the opening was on the bottom. Check it out. I was right. Now, since this is a tabletop, I'm going to be a little more careful opening this one up. I'd rather not cut my nice new table. Is this all one piece? Wow. That is a dirt. Look at this thing. This must be every bit of an inch and a half. Looks like it's two pieces of three quarter that are uh, connected together. But this thing is durable.
How do you think this goes together? I okay. just said which side was the front and completely forgot. This is the front. So it goes this way somehow. I can't imagine them not pre-drilling this. But nothing lines up. Hmm. That's interesting. Let's open up another box, see what we get. Maybe the answers will be in there. I'm avoiding that box. That's the machine head. And it is um, heavy. Another box in a box. With the instructions. But I believe that's just the servo motor instructions. Got nothing to do with the table. Alright. At least there's one box left. Let's see what's in this one. There. It's a little better at least. hard when you're an idiot. I insist on doing things the hard way. I'll give you this much. It's very well packaged. This I believe is the oil pan. These are all just huge guesses. I have no idea. Oh, here we go. Everything else can wait. Assembly instructions. This says assembly instructions. So these do indeed use these bolts. I should get sockets. That's what this audio needs. More ratcheting sounds. Nine sixteenths for those playing along at home. The height is adjustable. I'm going as high as again. Because you know. Interesting. This is also Phillips. Had I been paying any attention, I'd have probably noticed that. Editing this video is going to be brutal. I have Two bolts. Interesting. So far, everything's going together really well. Once I, you know, follow the instructions and got past the wheels, the wheels were stupid. Everything else seems fine. I suppose that's the worst of it, you know. Alright. Snag. Have to figure out what the heck they expect of me for here. Oh! It goes on the bottom. No wonder I'm confused. I'm doing something wrong. first nut and bolt. The bolts on these seem to have been um, welded in place, which is nice. I don't have to worry about them loosening up, but I'm assuming this is, isn't done that way because uh, this is adjustable for left-handed or right-handed, or left-footed or right-footed, I suppose.
Is that towards the front or that's no, towards the back? It's such a bizarre design. There are no pre-drilled holes. And the text is in red. Look at that. Red text. How am I supposed to read red text on tan? I guess we just fake it, huh? 50 millimeters. I really wish you gave me a front to back measurement as well. I get that they don't want to pilot drill anything. I'm assuming there's multiple tops for different um, bases, which is why they didn't pre-drill. But they burnt something in. You could easily have just, you know, gave a couple of reference marks, something. All right, so this is for the drawer, which I'm probably not using. Now it's time to flip it over. Put it on some wheels. That's not, that's not bad. Not somewhere to place everything. I know all the real unboxers have down views and all kinds of stuff. Well. I don't. I think it is installing the so the actual machine here, which I am not looking forward to. Because it is heavy. Have the tape all cut on the bottom. With luck, you can pick this up. Everything will pop open and just slide neatly out. Give myself two to one odds against, by the way. But we gotta try it anyway. There we go. I think we're ready for this just yet. This is where we're at. Interesting. Needles, super useful. I'm gonna go through those. Well, maybe not. Hey, it came with a screwdriver and a little screwdriver. And probably the wrench for the feet. And then the oil pan. And a little bitty jug of oil. So for those who aren't familiar, most industrial strength sewing machines um, have oil pans, which is what this is. So the machine is constantly oiling itself. Way better than me forgetting to do it. Let the machine forget to do it. Step by step, right? Now we put the sewing machine in. Does that get secured in at all? No, that's got to get secured in. I cannot imagine this just free floating like that. It's got these four weird little feet. We're about to set the sewing machine in. This is so weird. It's um, all these rubber foots hold everything in place. I mean, the machine is heavy, like like really heavy. So I understand, but. Still just weird. So in theory, this should just set right in. No, these need to be installed first because that's where it pivots and rotates. Now it should just set right in. Hopefully it won't crush my fingers. Yeah, 
And now for all the weird random accessories. Let's get everything out of here and bring everything back in. They're calling this thing a servo motor, which I find weird because uh, it's a VFD, a variable frequency drive. And it is very neat. I think that's about where we're at. Come here. So let me set all this down and put you back in frame. Since that should be all of the boxes. We have officially unboxed. This should be everything. Let's see where we're at. First thing I'm going to do is take everything out and knoll it real quick. It's a nice little LED. Set out a little bit better. Maybe I can find all the things I need to find. We're gonna do this thing. Three washers. So carriage bolts have a square bit on the end, so when you tighten it, it pulls it in and stops them from spinning. So it looks like there's a couple of set screws in this thing. This is what the little screwdrivers for, I'm assuming. So now these three bolts hold this thing in place. So this is supposed to mount up here, and I'd have to fight with it a lot, but if you look, this has got a slit in it. And the reason for that is so I can put a washer and thread this nut on just a little bit. And I slide that through, and now it's way easier to put these on. Way easier than trying to fight with the gravity. We're now at the undercarriage part of the machine. So I'm going to set this up down there and keep going. So this goes... Again, I don't see any... Um, no, there are no pre-drilled holes. So I have to just drill this in place. So it would have been real nice to do when I had it upside down. Order of operations doesn't seem to be um, a priority here. Because according to the picture, it just kind of goes up, right? We're on this one here. So, so, guess where we're putting it. Alright, so now this linkage goes... There's not a single word on this instruction, by the way. It would be nice to have, you know... This goes here. Something, anything, you know? Instead, I guess about most of this stuff. Yeah, I'm relatively mechanically inclined, but not everybody else is. It'd be nice to have some instruction. There is not much in the way of room in here. Now we mount the drive itself with, again, three screws and no pilot holes. But we're almost done. This time we're going to the front. So it just gets mounted underneath. Look at that. There's no... No nothing, right? They circle the piece you need, and then three screws. And then the next one, it's already hooked up. So I guess that's where we're doing it. I think that may be it for down here for now. This is the foot pedal. And this is that linkage. I should probably line it up where I want and then tighten it down. There. When I push down on it, it pulls down on the it's throttle control. So this process has absolutely taken control over my, uh, my garage. My workshop. This is my belt guard. I guess it goes on next. I say I guess because it doesn't really say. How is this? So this piece has to come off. Nowhere in the instructions does it say take that off. But it won't fit around the belt if I don't. 
See, because the belt goes in this channel. There's... It's like this one, eh, they'll figure it out. And this would have been way more useful to put on before this piece came on. Because I don't know how I'm going to get this through it, a big metal piece. I would give these instructions maybe a 4 out of 10. Which goes over. Oh, there's two screws here that I'm not going to... Oh. We're going to move over. Here's what we're fighting with now. i got to put these two screws in. It would have been way easier to do way in the beginning. I believe it's these. Again, nothing's labeled, so I have no idea. For what I paid for it, I would really have liked better instructions. We are right on the cusp of good instructions versus bad instructions. Why wouldn't that have fallen in there? So there's a hole here. I'm assuming that is for tightening screws. Next page is this, which doesn't say anything about anything. It just shows a picture of it. So I don't, I, I don't even know. I'm assuming at some point in time I'm supposed to screw that in. It doesn't tell me. Because there are two slots here. So this is two pictures. Nothing circled, so I have no idea what I'm supposed to be looking at. I suppose I didn't ask him how easy it was to assemble. So I had no one to blame but myself. So I have two of these. I'm assuming this one's got weirder stuff on it. I'm not seeing anything about oh, that goes up on top. Got it. That's my guide. My thread goes down. Well, my thread as low as I can make it. Again, no instruction on how all this stuff goes together. Just a picture of it completed. I'm only putting one on because I only use one color. I don't use a double thread. This one doesn't even have a hole in it. And this is just held in place with another clamp. No, you know, a positive affecting. Uh, before I get too far, because I'm sure this only goes on one way. It is a great looking machine. Now that everything's together, I'm very happy with it, but getting to this point was kind of annoying. I'm not even done yet plug everything in. So I have this thing. I think it's right there, but I have no idea. There's no, doesn't even talk about this. All right, what do we got here? So I don't understand, there's like three wires coming from this one thing. Why not just have one wire? It makes so much more sense. I'm gonna have to cable tie all this stuff together. I don't even know where this goes. Cable management is a bit um, precarious at best. Let's uh, put my cover back on and then be done. The weird cable power cord which is now just cycling through something I guess uh, the knee pad which is supposed to raise and lower the foot nothing and there's I went through this book like four times and there's no explanation of it for what I paid there should be more instructions but it's all together give me a bit to read 
and we'll see how it performs. All right, I'm pretty sure I have this all set up wrong, but it's working, so I'm not gonna mess with it. I managed to get a decent stitch. I mean, I'm not seeing any white on this side. I'm not seeing any black on this side. I've got it set to, I think, 500, which I believe is stitches per minute or per second. I don't know. I can feather the foot pedal so I can go nice and slow, or I can give it the beans. Let's, uh, let's kick it all the way up. This is 2,500, which I feel is going to be slightly terrifying. All right, I was moving slow just to turn. Wow. Let's do that again. That's in real time. Jeez Louise, that's quick. And now just for fun, let's see how slow we can go, which is 50. This is all the way down. That's as fast as it is going. This is 500. I think that's about where I'm comfortable. So the, the raising is super hard to do. I really wish this knee um, thing would work. I'll have to figure that one out later. Now here comes the big question. I need to trim, or I need to go through four pieces of leather. Can I? I'll close this down. Grab both my tabs and see what happens. Mm. Yeah, I'd say, yeah, that, that did a great job. Four layers. Didn't even be at bat nine. So I suppose in the end, was it worth it? Setting it up was unpleasant. It took me, and I'm, I'm relatively savvy with, with electronics and mechanicals, four hours. I was fighting with things, and boxing things, moving things around. I was filming, so that probably added an hour-ish, but putting it together was unfun. The documentation was um, lackluster at best. Um, certain things still aren't working because they just aren't. Uh, the instructions I have, which should be this exact machine, the, the there are parts that aren't on this machine. So threading it's next to impossible because properly because it I don't have those pieces. So that makes things more complicated, but it works real good and it'll let me do the things I need to do. The fact that it's on wheels is kind of neat because I can move it out of the way and bring my other thing in and do my normal stuff and then when I need it I'll bring it back. Um, more than likely I'm just going to make a cover for it. Out of canvas. and. Uh, It'll just have a home over there. I probably have to reconfigure everything. Once Bigger House is done and it has a place to be, it'll be in there rather than out here and I don't have to worry about, you know, sawdust nearly as much. I think it'll do what I needed to do. And in the end, that's what really matters. It was very expensive, but it is a very nice machine. Was it worth it? Yeah. If you have it, yeah. If you don't, no. I'm happy with it. I like it. 
This is not a normal video. I don't do unboxings. I don't do assemblies. I don't do product reviews. That's not my thing. But this was the first real um, purchase I've made for my Empire of Dirt. So since it was new, I wanted to film it. I wanted to, to chronicle the journey because this thing is going to last me probably forever. I hope. If it doesn't, eh, it doesn't, but you know. So next week, we should go back to, to finishing this up now that I have the thing to finish that up with. And then that's going to be done. We'll do this cool reveal. I'll do the whole costume. If you're interested in that. Maybe thinking about uh, liking and subscribing. Maybe leave a comment. Maybe not. Hope to see you next week.